and welcome to For The Drive. Today's video is all about the XE because finally modding it again. I mean, about time, right? Uh, I've wanted to do this for so long and I've just never had, just not everything's aligned uh, up until literally a couple of days ago to the point where I could actually just like start spending money and doing bits and pieces. But I'm finally upping the power a little bit to the Jag XE. So in my hands, I have a little box from TDI tuning which will give me a little bit extra power a lot of you I can imagine I can just hear like potential hatred coming through in the comments already about you should get a remap do you put it on a dyno I know but I have my reasons for this because it's still under warranty it's still like within its three years of me owning it I don't want to ruin any sort of potential warranty and obviously permanently changing remaps even though I know I can get them changed back to the stock map it's just something that I just don't want to deal with right now whereas this system is literally you plug it in you can adjust it bits and pieces it's got like seven settings on it I'll go through it in a second and once you unplug it it goes back to stock done it like the car will basically won't know that it's had more power up until the point where you've taken it back off so for me like for the amount of money that you spent on it is actually well worth it at least to find out whether it's worth me actually going up to the higher horsepower range i might not notice it i don't know but i wanted to go for this for the time being um if the car stays for much longer then maybe i'll consider doing a few bits of like mods but then i'd want to change actual parts before getting it put on the dyno but anyway for now, I am very happy and very excited to finally get this box because the specs of what it would potentially give me are pretty good. So I'm just going to open it up for you. If I can get it open. Oh my god. Adult can't even open a box. There we go. I mean, that is the box in question. Ooh, put it right way up. There we go. It's... I mean, you've got seven modes, and it normally basically they preset it to go in smack bang in the middle at four, and that's your best economic as well as best performance. It's like basically straight down the middle, and also I believe it's a nice little harness, which obviously goes into all of the ECU and the sensors. This attaches to two sensors, which I've got nice handy little um, instructions. Put that down about telling me about all the different things of where it's got to go. There it is. Oh God, there we go, that's what I want. I mean, it says installation will take no more than five minutes. Cut to two hours later, because that's just how it works. Um, but basically you actually attach it to the manifold, well, I'm just piece of paper. I'm just gonna make sure that I get, I say everything from themselves, because they obviously know what they're talking about far more than I sell. Uh, you've got the manifold inlet sensor and then you've got the intercool outlet mounted sensor as well So you've got two different sensors and then the ECU the big main clip which obviously powers it and, and controls what needs to be done So I say a couple of friends and a couple of people that I know have had these installed to their cars Diesels and petrols alike and, and put it up to seven by the maximum power and have immediately said that they have real really felt the surge of extra power and the turbo lag because these are designed to work with turbo cars it really apparently obviously I've not tried it yet but I'm eager to find out apparently they work really well with reducing turbo lag and things like that so the projected figures for the 2 litre turbo that my car has uh, currently it's running at 240 brake 250 pounds of foot torque now from the website, I'm trying to see if I can find it on here just to make sure I can show you, but it doesn't seem to be on this piece of paper. But on the websites, when I was looking at it, it will take the stock ECU up to 292 brake and 300 pounds of foot torque. So it's basically just 40, uh, about 50 of both brake horsepower and pounds of foot torque. I'm hoping, optimistic, that with the, I've got K, obviously previous video I added a K&N um, sports like air filter, panel filter, but even so it's still a little bit better than the standard one and obviously reduced a fair amount of weight and a little bit extra free flowing air through the uh, the back boxes that I had custom made. I am really hoping that maybe if I get it dynoed later in the year or earlier next year when I kind of just, when I'm curious about what it's running, I might be running about 300. But even if it's 292, that's still 52 brake horsepower more than I'm running at the moment so that's 
pretty good like increase. So first things first, as soon as I can, I will put this, I'll be showing you me literally trying to attach it into the car. It says five minutes, but we shall see how long it takes. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So I finally got to the point where I can now fit this uh, TDI tuning box to the car. Uh, taking the air cover off and it looks obviously pretty underwhelming being not a nice V8 which is what I'd love to have underneath the bonnet of a car but never mind. So I'm going to put you the camera on the tripod and then we're going to give it a go and see how long it actually takes to fit this uh, TDI box. It says five minutes but okay I'm always skeptical of these things. They project that they expect people to know exactly what they're doing and I really don't. So here we go. I think that is it done. I mean, obviously you've got the two sensors there and there, which I've replaced with the new harness. The box is sat nice and neatly mounted to some of the frame. So it's obviously, because I don't want that moving around. And I've uh, cable tied the cables to, uh, very loosely, but cable tied it to one of the other pipes to stop it from getting involved with any of those running belts when the engine is running. So hopefully, I'm just gonna put the ignition on, start it back up, I might have a quick drive just to make sure that there's no any sort of faults or anything because obviously that's the thing they say to you that if there's any faults come up obviously either ring them up or consult the troubleshooting guide so I think put the engine cover back on, bonnet back down just a quick run around the corner just to make sure everything's running and there's, I'm not getting no flashing up of faults and things like that and then say hopefully by the end of the week 30-40 miles would have been done and I can then finally put it up and see what 292 maybe 300 just about uh, will feel like in the Jag XC so uh, I'll see you guys then so a little bit of an update for you so far through this like experience of fitting it um, a few of you more eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed that when I was showing you where I put the sensors I basically put one of them in the math center which is completely and utterly wrong uh, the car quite quickly told me the next day that something was wrong uh, engine management light went on and it came up basically running in safe mode so I got on to TDI and they were in the fairness they were fantastic as soon as I contacted them and said there was wrong or something wrong they immediately asked like send some pictures show what's going on so they can see where it's connected to the engine bay realized my mistake um, we're very kind because I said as soon as I realized as soon as they told me and I said oh my god I'm such an idiot they said, don't worry you know it's easily rectified we can sort it and they guided me through the process in my defense, there is a big old coolant pipe above the sensor that I needed to find. Um, so it was quite help, like quite well hidden, but in my, I, you know, I got it wrong, so I've got to take the flag for that. Um, but it is now all connected up correctly. The engine management light went off. The car's now no longer in safe mode. It's been fine for the last three, four days. Um, so obviously that is fixed. It was only a temporary problem because I connected the wrong sensor up. I've been fighting all week to put this, like to not, to keep myself from putting this into dynamic mode and playing about with it on full power because I wanted this opportunity where I could actually have the camera set up in the car to capture it as the first time of driving it with hopefully the up, like the much higher um, BHB and torques. But even in normal mode, the difference is mad how much extra and how much lower in the rev range it will pick up and give me just that little bit extra surge of power uh, and then when it's in you know when it's fully open with the turbo spinning and everything as well even in normal mode it is wanting to go quite well and so today is the day where i finally put it into my dynamic mode i am very excited i'm waiting till there's a little bit of a stretch without any cars in front and a nice straight road so i can like slow down and give it some beans just to see how much the straight line acceleration is going to be um, with the new and improved figures because if it's like what it is in like normal mode but another level up then 
I'm going to be very happy. What time was this? Definitely a bit more powerful. Yeah. Feels quite smooth as well. I don't obviously the, the remap system inside that box is clearly quite complex. Um, but it's although you definitely feel more power, it's not you don't get that kind of weird surge as much as you used to because of the turbo lag. So, like, you just, although you do feel a turbo surge a little bit, it's lessened because it's earlier as well. So, I don't know, it just feels like I come sometimes I look down and go, oh, okay, I'm going that way. Oh, oh, <laughs> put the brakes on. Um, because it is quite deceptive of how fast it can start going. I mean, I've only had this the box connected for a few days and I've only put it in dynamic for the last half an hour 45 minutes so I really am only going off what it feels like literally so fresh um, I'm sure I'll talk about it every now and then in other videos when I'm out in the Jag um, for road trips and things like that but I am so happy it's worth every penny the people at TDI have been phenomenal with their product as well as their like help and uh, you know basic guidance of when I screwed up and has now got me running with so close to being 300 brake horsepower and 300 pounds of foot torque um, without much of a modification at all literally connecting a box having a nice easy unit map hopefully the exhaust and the KN like sports panel filter has helped a little bit more as well I don't know I'm just so really happy now I am it's made me love driving this car a little bit more yet again every time you mod a car you do kind of fall back in love with it um, and this definitely has done that so huge thank you to TDI for making the thing in the first place um, and obviously and as I say being really good about with all the information and help but that is the end of the video thank you very much for watching Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later.